Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the podcast. We are privileged and pleased to have with us a return visitor to the podcast, Ms. Holly Celiano, who you are well familiar. And she's also building her own platform as well. If you do like the content, please do like, subscribe, and share as it helps the channel grow. And we're going to have Holly on today to discuss a bevy of different subject matters to give some diversification to the overall tenor of the conversation. Holly, once again, thank you for being here and welcome to the podcast. Thank you, John. It's always a pleasure to be back. So you and I were talking about the um, bullet points on what's going on globally, which is what you and I both like to focus on than mm -hmm. just hearsay on what's going on, because what's going on globally gives you a pulse really where we are with everything going on globally. And you can kind of pinpoint how close we are. So I did some um, bullet points, which I want to go over. Sure. Uh, it surmises all of, all of the talking points that um, are really important. Yesterday, you went and you did breaking news that the BRICS Alliance now has overtaken the G7 in terms of the share of the global GD GDP. Right. And they comprise 35% of the total GDP and 30 more nations have lined up to join. This really is huge. And, you know, it's setting the stage for what is coming. Then you have the new members of BRICS this week we saw, which the original is Brazil, Russia, India, China, South America, or South Africa. Added was Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. Those are big, huge players that are joining the stage. And, you know, it's just telling you exactly where the world is going. The G7, the G20, they basically are being left behind in the dust. Then you have JP Morgan was just selected this week to run the new trade bank in Iraq. That is huge. That's, you know, setting the stage for them revaluing their currency. In the fall of 2023, Iraq said they would get rid of all the black market trading, and they have. In 2023, they arrested a man with over 2 billion in dinar. And they recently, they arrested another man with over 2 trillion in dinar. So they're cleaning up their black markets. They're doing every single thing they said they were. Iraq promised in the Q4 of last year that on January 1st, 2024, they are no longer using the US dollar. They are not. On January 1st, 2024, Iraq said, they're no longer using the US dollar and they're urging their citizens to de-dollarize and pull the US currency off the street. They are doing exactly what they said they have been doing. Iraq publicly said in Q4, they're going to be joining the BRICS and they are, they're in the process of joining. At the WEF, it was reported they had to pass one legislative thing and important laws and tax laws. So that is something that they're working on right now. The president of the Supreme Judicial Council who held a meeting with the US Treasury regarding sanctions against Iraq, that was on January 29th of 24. The banks will be down for about a week or two while Iraq passes all their important laws and taxes to return internationally. This is a potential scenario that the banks will all be down. On January 28, 2024, the Central Bank of Iraq has decided to restore the mechanism of financing Iraq's foreign trade starting March 1, 2024. So they're doing a buildup and doing exactly what they said they've been doing. What is fixing their mechanism? In my opinion, that would be their rate change to be internationally traded. They wanna be free of US sanctions and the US dollar and be a free and independent country. The US ambassador to Iraq, Alina L. Romanovsky stated on 2-1-24 that Iraq's trade with the US has more than doubled in the last two years. Iraq's exports to the US are up more than 110% and imports 
over 150%. So let me ask you this, John, if that is happening and they're pulling the dollar, the US dollar off the streets and not using it, how are they able to do that? <laughs> they must be running on a new system. Yeah, correct. It's just it's, not been- a segue transition. Exactly. They're running on a new system. There's, that's the only way that would happen. So they're building up to what they have to do. They right. just have those tax laws to complete and to fix their mechanism by March 1st. To verify, gonna, sorry, go ahead. So, and then to verify the QFS is real. There was a go OCC.gov. And if you hit the search bar, um, it talked about the quantum financial system that you'll find government documents. Now, I just want to preface nobody whatsoever, if anybody approaches you to set up a QFS account or to, you know, have that account and do XRP or put XLM, those are all scams. Do not do that. But this is just to show that the QFS is real because we never see anything from the government in print. Right. And in preparation for the global currency reset and arrival of the quantum financial system, it's currently running parallel to any international financial activity. It's regulated by the respective agencies and they must strictly comply with no tolerance to all protocol and regulations stipulate, stipulated in the International Quantum Initiative Act passed by the US House of Representatives and approved by the UN and USMCA, formerly known as NAFTA. So a lot of people do not see any evidence of the QFS and and that is what that was doing. So, yeah, excellent, uh, excellent summation, Holly. Thank you. I just want to add a couple of important um, counterpoints to what you said to kind of add to to what you uh, the facts that you laid out. So, as we discussed, um, you know, both on your channel and our channel, and I did share uh, the QFS, you know, government findings that you gave me on our our Telegram, so people could see that and they can go back and reference that uh, at any time they want. Um, one of the 40 nations that we talked about that's waiting in the wings to join Holly is Zimbabwe. And we've talked about their vast sums of gold. So they'll be able to literally carry uh, bricks if they wanted to, and, and, of, and of course be the bread basket to the world. So them getting that, that foothold on the G7 really, as you said, is important because it sets the stage for everything that people keep asking about. They have to, they have to do research and understand the puzzle pieces, the preliminary building blocks that make all of this go. So what you're sharing is very important pieces to that overall equation. Right. And another really big thing that just came out today is Jack Smith's election interference case against Trump, Trump has been removed yeah. from the court calendar and postponed indefinitely. Yeah. And the trial was supposed to be next month. And it looks like the case isn't going to trial. So that's huge. I mean, yeah. if if everybody looks at the global picture instead of the little um, daily, I hear bond people are going, or I hear this is going. If you look at the global picture, it's being laid out exactly what's going to happen. And Iraq is telling you exactly when they're doing their thing, which is March. You know, that's, again, we look at timelines and, you know, we're careful about dates and rates, but yes, all, what we're also looking for too, Holly, it's a very great, uh, important point you meant, uh, mentioned about Jack Smith and the case. It indefinitely just means they're gonna just fade it out until it's out of the news cycle. So that is a great sign. It's just another piece of victory uh, front of scenes, right? But yes. um, one of the other things I thought was interesting you and I touched off offline about is, I put this on the, our Telegram channel, but uh, guess who is starting to make a public appearance again and did so on Fox News this week? Well, you told me, so I have a heads up. <laughs> Steve, yeah, it was a little bit of a setup. Steve Mnuchin, who right. is the former Treasury Secretary, but he's letting you know he is also, some people may know this, some people may not, he's a movie producer. Q always says, this is a movie. We're watching a script. He's been financing it, but now he's coming front of scenes, quietly like President Trump, laying the groundwork, laying solutions, letting right. Americans who don't know, you know, people here know, but the, the whole society know, 
what's incoming and the solutions they've already laid down, as you said, in the parallel economies as a segue. Yes. I also just want to go back to when I said with Iraq doing what they're doing and saying March, because everybody hears what they want to hear. Yeah. I am not saying that this happens in March. It can happen anytime. Correct. So That's don't fine. hang your hat on that because I know people do. Yeah, of course. That's a good disclaimer. And, and to just back you up on that point on our weekly wrap up that we did this morning that will come out later today, like this show, um, you know, we talked about uh, we need to be watching this weekend as the end of trading in the market today, what our deep state military or deep state U.S., more, to be more precise, is going to do in terms of counteract counterstrikes against Iran for the soldiers that we were reported that were killed this week. Uh, that's all to be designed to try to inflame a war because they don't have one, but mm -hmm. that will give them the cover story for the reset in the aspect that as they attack Iran, Iran will counterattack, then Iran will go after Israel. And then that sets the stage, what we've been talking about on our channel about Israel doing their grave mistake of attacking the secret nuclear power plants that will take people's eyes off of the dinar for a change to stop fixating on that. And they'll be distracted like the rest of the world with all these other uh, news cycles. And that'll happen because as you said, Iraq has already, Sudani already has plans to get this stuff launched up into parliament with reforms, taxes, and tariffs, and all the like, you know, behind the scenes while this stuff is going, and it gives the deep state the cover story they need to have this happen, and then our military will get involved and pull out the corrupt Iranian proxies in Iraq. So there's a lot of crossover right. events with interplay that are taking place during this whole news cycle event. Right. It's more important to focus on the global news because they're they're showing you and telling you exactly what happening. Yeah, it's predictive programming. They have to yeah. tell you in, in disclosure, yes. but they just do it in the guise of entertainment and right. information. So you're right. Keeping keeping your priorities straight and keeping focus on the right things is key. Speaking of which, as a good segue, you have a great testimony, Holly, as to how you've overcome uh, your trials and tribulations in life and how you have found success in doing that. And I think it would be an interesting uh, testimony to share with your audience and our audience, respectively, you know, just some touchstones in your life, how you overcame them, and what advice you have for people going forward. Sure. So my my passion in life is my health. Um, I've shared with you a lot of people do know my story. I had breast cancer in 2009, had a double mastectomy, and it put me on a journey of healing myself. And what I have come to discover is pretty much the steps, it's body, mind, spirit, and your and your physical being. Um, it's mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, all have to be working in harmony together. And if one of those is out of whack, then the entire system of yours is out of whack. It's being in balance. And it's been a lifetime since since that time of finding i guess the the secret to how to be healthy and i am you know i'm very proud of my age i'm not ashamed to say i'm 62 and a half and i think i am in better shape and look better and have more energy than i did when i was younger and um so what is that what does that look like well it's working out every day, you know, doing something physical. Most people just are sitting here in these communities and they're waiting for a med bed or they're, you know, waiting for a quick fix. You know, go out and go for a walk and take care of yourself. Um, lifting weights is important. It creates muscle tone. Um, your emotional body. Most people have so many trapped emotions in their we store them in our cells and I do emotional clearing that heals that. And it's the releasing trapped emotions that can make you sick because over time they create a dis-ease in the body, which builds up and it manifests as cancer or it manifests as another illness. So it's removing whatever those trapped emotions are. If you get triggered by something, those triggers are telling you that something's not right. Like Nobody or anything should trigger you. And if you're triggered, it's not the person triggering you. It's something within you. 
So we need to look at ourselves and say, why am I triggered? Where is this coming from? And then, you know, release that trapped emotion. It's also eating healthy. Um, so many people like we're learning how sugar is such a terrible thing to consume, but mostly all our food source is laden with sugar. I mean, they put it in everything and it is the most addictive thing. So if you can limit your sugar and your carbs and, you know, alcohol consumption, um, you know, those things just really destroy the body. If, if people overeat, if people are addicted to drugs or alcohol or whatever addiction, why are you addicted to that? You're trying to mask something that is acting as a something to fill in a void in your life that's missing. So, you know, figure out why, why am I hurting that I'm going to alcohol or drugs or food or whatever to fill a void? So when you, when you really start peeling back the layers on yourself and discovering why you do the things you do and take a really deep analysis of yourself, that's when you can start really healing yourself. And it, it does take work and it's not always easy to, to pull back the layers and take a deep, dark look why we do what we do. So, and spiritually, you know, there is, and you and I have talked about this, if you don't have God in your life or know that there is a higher power and you're trying to do this on your own, it is so hard. It is like almost impossible to try to exist in this world without relying on God. Um, during my deepest, darkest times, God was there carrying me sometimes because I I have been through probably everything you could imagine. And I've come out the other side better because I did have God in my life. And I, I did, thank God, have people in my life to help me to overcome a lot of things and get healthy and whole. So one thing I can do, I've been there. I, I'm not speaking from not having experienced anything. I've experienced it all. So I can share my story having lived it and I'm on the other side. And if I can help somebody with whatever their struggles are or to get to the other side, it's all about being healthy because if you don't have your health, having money that we're going to come into will not matter. You won't be able to spend it you won't be able to have a productive, healthy life. And we can take steps right now by the choices we make and what we do and live from a place of optimal health. Absolutely. Beautifully said. Thank you for sharing your testimony. We sincerely appreciate that. Now, we kind of touched on this on our last show, so maybe it's a nice place to kind of take the next, you know, segue step. You were very passionate about discussing last month, um, you know, post financial RV preparations. And, and I'm in agreement with that. I think it's just a timing thing where, as I said, we're going to most likely we will do a show in March on our channel covering that and you know, doing a presentation and really giving people, you know, because people request it all the time, fleshed out suggestions and strategic moves that people can make to be prepared now, not the time to to prepare isn't once it happens, it's well before, right? And, and I touched on that Absolutely. I'm gonna wrap up this morning. Uh, but you you went into great uh, detail about that last month. So as a segue to that, um, can you touch on a little bit about, because something we feel passionate about on our end as well, the importance of proper mindset, taking action and you know paying attention, following directions. Because like you said, people hear, not everybody, but certain people hear what they wanna hear, you know, because you know, a lot of people want their ears tickled and that's not what we do. We, we want people to think, you know, critically and, and see the puzzle pieces, see how they interlocked so they can draw their own conclusions. But to do that, you have to be paying attention, following the prompts, the cues, the direction. So the, the attitudinal mindset is so important. So could you touch on that and how that impacts the uh, post-RV preparations, please? 
So you and I spoke yesterday about this and the most important thing that we all can learn right now is having critical thinking and discernment. And that is a muscle that we should have been building because there are so many scammers out there, so many people waiting in the wings for this financial blessing to happen that they're going to pounce on you just like the QFS, open a QFS account now, or the people in the crypto communities that want to have you open you know, a crypto account and steal the money. Your discernment needs to be so strong, so rock solid that you will not fall for this. So many people will not make it if if they do not have that strong critical thinking and discernment, there's no rushing to do anything. Nobody has to rush out and do anything. Just take your time, sit with, with this wealth and just settle into it. Most people have not been expanding their mindset to handle wealth like this. And I really do believe you and I spoke about this, that we have been given this much time to grow because it is an energy. Money is an energy. Money is just, it's an ebb and flow. It comes, it goes. And we have to be able to handle it. You know, so many people have lack thinking and that lack thinking, if you have not grown into an abundance consciousness, no matter, you know, you could give me a hundred million, five billion, a trillion, I could, my consciousness has grown so vast. I handle that and it doesn't blow me out of the waters. We're giving somebody a million dollars might just be way too much for them. And you will only be given what you can handle. So people during this time right now should have been growing their consciousness to expand to this and growing their mindset and getting rid of the lack thinking. And it's not running out and becoming the new elite. It's not, you know, um, wanting to go buy every single toy that's out there. Um, if you want that, that's fine. And I'm not knocking that, but it's bigger than that. We, we really are being given something, the meek shall inherit the earth. And it is... It is taking this money and and doing great things with it. And um, people people have to have the right mindset in order to be in that space to comprehend that. Yeah, absolutely. And just and again, a couple of addendum points to what you just rightly said. Um, people's divine rights come from God, not from man. So when you say that you're, you know. You're going to be given what you can handle. That's from God. Man's I mean, not going to say, hey, you can only have this, you know, in regards to the this humanitarian funds, or you're only going to get this from the bank. The bank is a business. They don't care. Obviously, it precludes the obvious notion that you're not going to do money laundering or pedophilia or any of that stuff. I mean, that should be understood. But if you want to go buy 10 houses, 10 cars, they don't care. Have at it. But your, your discernment and that needs to come from the Lord and, and he checks the heart, right? Man, man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And, you know, as you were saying earlier, uh, a, a great biblical verse that comes to mind, Proverbs 23, 6, is a man or woman thinketh, so you become. So what you fixate and focus on is what you're, what you're going to, uh, you know, bring into your reality. And that's biblical, as well as just practical for everyday living. And so when we see people on our channel fixated on when, 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 or what about this currency or what about this bond and this and that and the other thing, wrong mindset, because that's coming from fear. And we choose faith over fear. You know, the faithful person understands they're going to welcome abundance. in. I always call it the tide, right? Anybody stands on a lake or an ocean and just sits there. If the water goes in, it comes out. There's a flow. So if your mindset is open and you're not living in fear, you know the wealth will come, but the wealth comes in different forms. It's like you said, it's not just financial, it's health, it's you know giving. I have been a proponent for a long time, I know you agree, that we need to go from a lack to abundance society, we need to go from being takers to givers, 
And like you said, if your mindset is on sort of financial hoarding or fear-based, you're not going to hold this wealth. It'll be like a lottery ticket. And that is so counterproductive to where we need to be. So right. um, any other you know, additional well, thoughts you want to add? Another thought I had is when you were talking about, you know, people running out and buying, you know, all kinds of cars or houses or planes or whatever, that's fine. But why are you doing that? Are you doing that from a place of lack of filling a void because you never had it or you're, if you think these things will make you feel better about yourself? Um, when I first got involved in this, going back 13 years, I, I did have that mindset. I wanted to you know buy all these toys. And I've gotten to a point in the last few years where having stuff is not where I could care less about stuff because it's not the material things that are going to make me happy. You have to be happy within yourself. And once you find that happiness and that joy and that peace inside, you don't need anything else outside yourself to give you that. So if you're looking to fill a void with these things, do some reevaluation. Why do you feel you need that? What, what is it coming from? And most people, it is that lack mentality where you've never had these things. So you want to feel, fill up something from, from a place of lack. If you have an abundance mentality, you see abundance in each and everything around you. Like life is just abundant. Absolutely correct. Um, great. Any other, uh, on your spreadsheet, you had some points, any other touch points that you wanted to cover? I think for everybody right now, use this time wisely working on yourself. Take 2024 as your year of health. Work on you because you, your mindset, your consciousness, your physical being, your emotional being, all of that is really what this is all about to be able to handle what's coming. The money is just a, a, a means for who you are as a person and how much you're going to have. Work on yourself to be able to handle that. Work on being the best you that you can be in 2024, the healthiest you. Because without your health, wealth does not matter. Absolutely. I mean, I, I've always been a proponent, Holly, of you know, doing the, the internal work on yourself from the inside out, and that includes your faith or, you know, some people need, might need a therapy to deal with a, a, a long nagging issue, whatever that might be. But it's, it's about really doing the internal investigatory work on all of its different fronts. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm really glad you brought that up. Also, I, I was curious to get your take on, um, I was very blessed from the beginning of my journey in this 11 years ago to have a mentor who mentored me in faith and in life and in the financials. Uh, we've had him on before, Donald Ward, and interviewed him a couple months ago. And I think it's, I was, like I said, blessed to have that, but it wasn't initially in my front of mind thinking. I'm just curious to get your thoughts on what you would deem of the importance of having a mentor, uh, if it, you know, organically happens to help you, you know, with mindset, with wealth, uh, thinking because like you said, a lot of people are predisposed in the old world that we're the mentality that we're leaving for the new place we're going and, and a mentor, maybe the contributory factors they might have in assisting that. I absolutely believe in a mentor. A mentor is somebody that's already paved the way. They've done the work to get to where you want to be. They know the pitfalls. They can give you guidance. Um, I've always had a mentor on my health journey, people that have done it, that have helped me, that have guided me, that have worked on my emotional body, my mental body, my spiritual body, my physical body, absolutely. Um, you know, I'll give a, a quick little story. My son, he has a landscaping business and for a young man, he is so successful. Well, he got a mentor right out of the gate and that is the key to his success. If a mentor is somebody that's paved the way, so get a mentor. If you need to work on your health, get a mentor. If you need to work on your, your faith, get a mentor. If you need to work on your emotional body, your mental body, get a mentor. And 
when we're on the other side of this, if you don't have the money now, you can use YouTube channels that are online to research and do it now. But on the other side of this, when you have money, you can pay to help some have somebody help you get there and work on yourself. Absolutely. Uh, any final thoughts you want to leave with our audience for today? Just stay positive, everybody. You can see where we're leading up and how this is playing out on a global stage. You know, stop, stop getting consumed with the daily today, today, today. Just, just flow with this. It's happening. It's in process. It's in works. And nobody's going to know when exactly it's going to happen. It will just spring on us like a thief in the night. But you can see we're leading up to it. Absolutely. Holly Celiano, as always, thank you for joining us on the podcast. We look forward to having you back soon and have God bless. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody.